Hello everyone and welcome to this build video for the output Eurorack module. The finished module looks like this and it features Eurorack input jacks, a gain trimmer, an LED view meter and balanced TRS outputs. It also has a powerful headphones amplifier capable of driving 250 ohms studio headphones with a separate volume control. And this is what the full DIY kit looks like. It contains all the parts that is needed to finish the module. The kit consists of two PCBs with pre-soldered SMT components, a black PCB panel, two bags of through-hole components organized as one bag with the connectors and one bag with the rest of the components. Please note that the power cable and front panel screws are not included in the kit. All right, let's start the build. It's a good idea to organize the components in small containers to make it easy to find them and also avoid that they get lost during the build. The first step is to remove the ESD protection from the main PCB. We are going to mount the power connector and the electrolytic capacitors on the component side of the PCB. The capacitors should be 100 microfarad, 25 volts, and they are polarized. One of the legs have a minus marking. But let's start with the power connector. Follow the marking on the PCB to mount it the right way. Pin 1 should go on the same side as the white stripe on the PCB. One way of making sure that the connector housing is properly seated is to solder one leg and reheat the solder joint while they press the connector in place. After that you can solder the rest of the legs. Ok, next we have the capacitors I was talking about earlier. The leg with the minus marking should go onto the side with the large white marking on the PCB. Go ahead and solder them in place, trim the legs and touch up the solder joints if you need to. All right, let's move on to the control PCB. The LEDs are not needed at this step, so you can keep them in the ESD protection bag for now. The smaller 10 microfarad 50 volt electrolytic capacitors are next, and they should be mounted on the component side of the control PCB. The same goes with these capacitors. The leg with a minus marking should go onto the side with a large white marking on the PCB.
Now it's time to mate the boards together, electrically and mechanically for the first time. And this will be done with using the potentiometers and the single row header connectors. First of all, mount the dual ganged potentiometers to the top side of the main PCB. Make sure that the pots are properly seated onto the PCB. This is very important in order to make the module go together in a good way. It can be a bit tricky to align the legs, but just be careful so you don't bend them. Double check that the pots are in the right position and solder the legs. Next step is to position the board to board connectors. There should be a small gap of approximately 1 to 2 mm between the connectors. Place the connectors on the top side of the main PCB. There are two plastic washers that are used to give the correct spacing between the PCB and the washers should be placed onto the threaded part of each of the potentiometers. Align the connectors and place the control PCB with the top side facing upwards. Make sure that the PCB is seat and that the connector are fully inserted in the mounting holes on both PCB. Hand tight the potentiometer nuts and check that the gap between the board to board connectors are around 1 mm. You can now solder the connectors on both the main PCB and the controlled PCB. We have arrived to probably the trickiest part of the build, and that is the assembly of the input jacks. We will need the front panel for this, so you can remove that from the protective bag. The Thonky Con jacks should be mounted on the top side of the controlled PCB. Carefully place them onto the PCB and solder the long ground leg first. Next use the front panel to align the jacks and check that they are seated flush to the PCB. Reheat the solder joint and press the housing in place if you need to adjust it. Hand tighten the nuts of the jacks and check that the front panel is parallel to the control PCB before you solder the rest of the pin of the jacks. Check the alignment afterwards.
All right, it's time to get back to those LEDs. They should be mounted on the top side of the control PCB. The flat side of the flange at the bottom of the LED housing should align with the white marking on the PCB. Sometimes it can be difficult to see the flange, and in that case the shorter leg can be used as an identification. Use the front panel to set the height of the legs. They should rest at the inside of the panel. Solder the legs after double checking the alignment. The module is almost finished now, and the last step is to put the boards together and attach the TRS jacks. There is a metal rim on the TRS connectors that should fit into the holes of the front panel. You may have to wiggle the neck of the connector a bit to make it snap into place. The inside of the front panel should rest on the plastic housing of the TRS jack. Solder the TRS jacks on the main board. Check that the shafts of the pots are free to move and attach the plastic knobs. And with that, the build is completed. Before we hook up the module to the modular case, it's always a good idea to double check that the power supply rails are not shorted. You can do this with a multimeter in beep mode. The expected idle power consumption for an unconnected module 
is around 75 milliamps on both plus 12 volt and minus 12 volt rails. To make the most use of the module's potential, make sure that you hook it up to the balance line inputs of your mixer or audio interface. Check the documentation of your equipment how to do this. If your equipment only has unbalanced line inputs, you will need an adapter cable between the TRS output of the module to the TS input of the audio equipment. Do not connect an unbalanced TS plug to the module, since it will short the negative side of the balance output driver and it may cause distorted audio or even break the module. The module is almost self-explaining, but there are basically two signals paths from the input jacks. One is the gain trimmer, view meter and balance line TRS output and the other is the headphone output connected via a volume control. Another important thing to mention is the headphones output. It's designed to drive studio headphones with 50 to 250 ohms impedance. It is not recommended to connect headphones with 32 ohm or lower. Be careful with your hearing and avoid high sound pressure levels for a long period of time. And with that I want to thank you for watching, good luck with the build and I see you in the next episode.